Hello, Commanders, and welcome to another day in Star Trek Fleet Command. In today's video, I wanted to fix the previous video I had. Um, you know, I've been playing this game for years, and this uh, is my first time having a YouTube channel. So thank you very much to everyone for bearing with me with some of my earlier videos. Having such poor quality and lagging so much. Um, I guess my computer cannot record video and play Star Trek Fleet Command at the same time. And so currently running this on my phone until I can figure out if I want to invest money on a computer very soon. Um, or I should say a better computer very soon in order to be able to do that more effectively. Things are easier, I guess, for me anyways on the computer. So thanks for your patience. But today we're going to redo the video. I, I've had a lot of people or a number of people anyways that have, um, I, th I think it's one, of, this is probably my, one of my highest watched videos. And there's been a lot of people have made comments about how it lags quite a bit and it's hard to follow. So I wanted to make this up to you and redo this video. So let's kind of jump into it. The video today, we're going to talk about the need for faction credits and the best way I have currently found to to farm those or to at least add to your gameplay is something I've been doing for a couple of months now. It's really made a big difference to me. Um, and that is to deal with the Voyager loop and how you can get a significant amount of uh, scout messages doing it. For those who haven't seen the video or know about this, it's, it's quite a big secret <laughs> that I was glad to find out um, and share with the community. So <clears throat> let's first um, hop over to, I want to talk about the need for faction credits. Um, and if you have the Voyager and don't know about this, maybe useful information. If you're a lower level player, this is really going to help you start now. Make sure that it's something you focus on because you're going to need a ton of faction credits. Now, now you'll get faction credits from doing dailies and things like that, but I try and find every avenue I can to get the faction credits, especially... What was it? Uh, has, it, has it been a month yet? Anyways, a little while ago, I was finally able to get my um, uh, my USS Enterprise A level fifty ship, uh, four star epic. Um, pretty proud of it. It's it's almost eighty million power, and we've been able to take on some big armadas in deep space with that ship and. I think we, what did we do last night? We had like a, someone else that had a Coronar level um, 46 rare ship, 30 million power. And I think there's a couple other G4 uncommon ships that we had, but we were able to successfully take down a 51 Epic, a 51 Epic, which actually did, did two of those last night. And that's really going to help with my turn-ins and everyone's turn-ins for the Epic credits that we need. So, um, so anyways, huge help, um, but it took me quite a while to save the credits I need for that. Okay, so let's jump into it. I want to talk about the need for faction credits really quick here. We'll show you a couple examples. Okay, so for those who don't know, this right here is stfc.space, and you can go to that website. Lots of information about hostels, kind of just everything, hostels, um, ships, officers. Right now, we're going to look at ships. So this right here we're looking at is the level 34 um, Enterprise, the first Enterprise you can get in the game um, for those who are working on it. Just wanted to talk about the cost, but right here, total required blueprints, 150, 1,200 per, and that's going to cost you 180,000 faction credits. Okay. Next, let's pull up back here. I want to pull up the Hydra. This is the G4 Miner. Also 150 blueprints, 1,200 per, and that's 180,000. So pretty significant cost. You want to find every opportunity, like I said, to get those faction credits. Okay, if we go back here, let's look at the... Uh, I'm trying to think what the Enterprise was, uh, or the 46 faction ship. That'd be the Newton for the for the Federation. I I end up getting the the Pilum first. The Pilum, sorry, I don't know why I say Pilum. I always see just how that's how my brain works, people. Okay, Newton. So level 46, 
you're looking at 350 blueprints needed, 1450 per. So that's half a million Federation credits. Yikes. Okay. It keeps going up, ladies and gentlemen. And let's go with the Enterprise. This is the ship I just was able to get recently. Uh, 650 required, 1600 per, 1 million faction credits. Yowzers! Let's go back to the Enterprise. To the last Enterprise that I believe is in the game. I don't think there's another one, but with the D. And this is one I really want to get down the road. And obviously, this is going to be... I think this is a level 60 ship, so quite a ways off even for me. <laughs> Just trying to go up one ops level. The, the part still cost is insane. Um, Two million faction credits. Okay, so, so that just emphasizes once again how important it is for you to get as many faction credits as you can let's talk about the voyager loop the normal loop let me hop into the galaxy view we'll zoom out a bit a little bit here so the voyager loop starts up here and what you need to do is you need to take your Voyager, and I'll just go over this really quickly in this video. We can go into more detail in another video if we if we need to. But um, the Voyager loop starts by going up, taking your Voyager, or if you have another ship, you don't have the Voyager yet, and you're gonna start in start in this system right here, Velix, and it goes around Atana and so forth with harder hostels as you go around this kind of area here down here. Do, do just kind of around this loop as you as you power up your ship. You need to go to that system and you need to hit the the Dairy Queen hostels, I think as Rev Deuce calls it. Let me set my ship there and I'll show you. But you have to go to that system and you have to hit these hostels. Now these hostels um, carry the relics, the Herogen relics, and you use that for your turn-ins as part of your turn-ins, okay? And so you turn that in uh, also, I guess, for those who don't have it yet, and I would highly encourage you to do so for Voyager Blueprints. So let's hop into the system here. So these DQ, Dairy Queen, Herogen Hunter Elites, a uh, buddy of mine in Alliance, he's sitting there. So what you can, what you want to do is you hit them for these Herogen relics. Get enough of those for your daily turn-ins. And you will do that in... Try not to take too much time here, not go into too much detail, because I don't want my videos to get long, but there's so much good information I want to share with you. So I've already done my turn-ins. I have a Tier 6 Voyager. Um, you'll do this first turn-in. And I, I really wish Scopely would fix this. I wish they would make it so you could click on a... Like, like they do in the... Um, in the Bajoran store, you can click on a little eye and you can see what the turning cost is. I wish they would just make that standard. Anyway, so you're gonna turn in here on the Herogen Loot Exchange, and what you will get from that is your um, your your summoning juice, as we'll call it, for the Voyager. Then we have the Species 8472 Loot Exchange, which is the next step. So once you summon the hostels, it's gonna summon an supposedly invisible hostel that gets mad at you for finding it because it's supposed to be hiding and it it's fast and it will come and it will attack your ship now, i'm not going to use it here but that's the idea because i want to show you something else to use the or how else to use the summoning juice here okay so we'll, we'll save that for now but you would hit this yellow button right here just by your your picture of your um your captain mine's 511 it will reveal one hostel, evading your sensors, blah, blah, blah. There's the summoning cost, 357. And I'll talk to you about that in a minute here. Okay. <clears throat> so you'll summon that. It'll hit your ship. You will get the, uh, what do we call it again? Let's see if I can find it in my, oh, no, let's go. I think the quickest way is going to be if we go, what was the biotoxins, I think? So many names for all these currencies we have right exotic biotoxins so you will use those <clears throat> to trade in to these in this species 8472 loot exchange that will give you um some parts for your ship it's going to give you <clears throat> let's 
Let's see if I can find them. You'll need this for additional turn-ins. I know it's complicated, but once you start doing this, it's really not that bad, and you just kind of just settle into it. <clears throat> so I did a video on these exchanges, but you will get also randomly, you'll get these commerce insignias that you can turn in for various things here. Um, <clears throat> you also get tokens where you can go and take your Voyager to do some refining in... Um, a couple of systems here so i go to let's see here to this fscp right here it's got common and rare anomalies that you can mine that you can do exchanges for and that's the main thing you want to do so that's that's the loop you go you hit the hostels you you do those regular summons um to to get those species 8472 to attack your ship, you get the biotoxins, you turn that in, and you can then go mine for the common and rare anomaly. Let me show you in my inventory. Where is it? Please organize this better scope. Please. There's got so much stuff in here. Okay, so I currently have 2.9 of this... Apparently, it didn't like it when I clicked on that because I think I hit a hostel and it shifted it. So I've got this common anomaly sample as well as this rare anomaly sample. My turn-ins are about 870,000 for the common anomaly and 2 million for the rare. So I need to go out and do some more mining of the rare anomaly samples to, to do that turn-in. Okay, so that's the basic loop explained. You want to be able to run that loop because as you're summoning hostels, one other thing, and this is the last thing I need to explain before we jump into farming for the faction or for the for the other piece of this loop that I wasn't told about, but I'm great to find out is, let's see if I can find it. I think it's down here. There we go. Delta Quadrant Board Coordinates. It's going to take 100 of these to go to a special system, and these randomly drop as you're doing your regular Voyager loop, okay? <clears throat> and so you'll need those for this next part. So you need to keep up doing your regular Voyager loop to get the items that you need for the turn-ins. Those turn-ins of common and rare anomaly samples are going to give you artifacts that will strengthen up your isolytic damage, defense, those kind of things, really beneficial to your ship. And so in the starship tree, you're going to scroll over to the Voyager past the Titan right there. Okay, so the Voyager, the things that I focused on when I first got it was, let's see here, I first did just one of each until I got as far as I could. I want to max a couple of things. One was the Voyager bartering to increase the efficiency of the ship parts. So to make it more efficient as you are... Um, trying to tear up your ship, okay? Hull capacity is a good one. Max cargo for all ships. Uh, specifically, ah, the Voyager cargo is the one you want to get initially is for the max cargo for your ship because tier one through three is deplorable. Um, I'm just going to tell you that now. It really, really sucks. Uh, and there's some crews that you can do to kind of help with that a little bit. I also wanted to get this artifact hunting extraordinaire. So increase how many artifacts you're getting when you're doing your turn-ins. Uh, you want to do Voyager tactics. So the damage you're dealing with your Voyager. Size so you can get that. And then the antimatter recycling is going to increase your warp range, which is important. Not only for this, but for other things. For example, if you have some big ships in your alliance someone that has a g5 uncommon you can take your voyager out and start one of those 51 epics in deep space because you have the warp range depending upon your ops level of course but you know the farther out you can get the better and they can take it out you get the leader box and everyone benefits so just a tip there high resolution imaging this is one to increase how quickly you are mining. So as you're going out in that last part of the loop to mine to mine the com or the common and rare anomalies, this will increase that speed significantly. Okay, so those are the things I would probably focus on there. You can look at the other stuff here, but those are most important here. Okay, so let's hop into the main part of what I wanted to show you here, and this is kind of cool. 
Now, let's talk cruise real quick. Sorry, that I keep thinking of all this stuff that I don't want you to miss. So this is how I have organized my cruise, okay? I've got 5 of 11, which is going to give me mitigation from 5 of 11 based on total health of the officers of the ship. As the captain ability, the officer ability is increased resources drop. So what? how we're going to maximize what resources we're what resources we are getting, okay, from the hospitals. That's super important. King, as the officer ability, he's increased the accuracy of the ship by 1,600%. Mine is maxed. Um, if you don't have, if you haven't maxed King or Marcus um, or Charbonneck, they're the three Trandy officers. Officers. Uh, PVP has changed, so we don't use these as much for PVP, but they definitely have other uses, and King is essential here. He, he makes this work really well. Let's hop into stfc.space one more time, and I'll show you that. Okay, so here's the hostels we're going to hit. We're going to summon these hostels, and we're going to take them out with our Voyager. Now, your Voyager has a big benefit because of the bonuses of the ship for these Dairy Queen or DQ hostels. Delta Quadrant, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Let me scroll down here and let's look at the defense. It's got 6,923 armor and shield deflection. Armor typically is larger in battleships. Shield deflection in explorers and dodge in interceptors. And this makes sense. It's an interceptor. Scroll back up. And if you see at the top, similar data cube, neutral interceptor. And I just picked a 37, but... <clears throat> all of these are going to be interceptors, and like all interceptors and most interceptors, I think, if not all, your dodge is the greatest value you have to overcome. That's why we want King, because his officer ability, once again, let's go look at it. Ability, he's increased the accuracy, so he's helping to overcome that dodge. I have tried using Lorca, thinking, what would happen if I cause hull breach, which is going to increase the damage of my ship for the criticals? Well, it didn't go so well, or not nearly as well as King. So I suggest using King. Lastly, if you don't have him, I suggest getting him. He's going to make a huge difference. Neelix is going to reduce the cost. He's the cost efficiency of your ship. Um, he's going to make those summoning costs, whether you're summoning for the 8472 species or you're doing this loop I'm going to show you here, he's going to reduce your summoning cost. You'll be able to summon more and get more loot for for your uh, trips okay and who do i have below decks here renaissance man this is really important here um this is the emh doctor if you i know that he's super hard to source if you have him use him below deck um and i realized that i did not don't have Hugh below deck. That is my fault. I'm going to recall this ship. So what you want to have is two people you want to have for sure is you want to have Renaissance Man if you have him to increase your loot that you're going to get. So that comes from the MH Doctor. Plus, you also want to have Hugh. So let me summon that ship back home. The warp research I have is pretty good, so it shouldn't take too long. But let's pull up Hugh. For those who don't know, he'll make a big difference in your... Um, the hostels that you're hitting. So Hugh, where are you? Mine is tier three. I've been able to run the Borg Armadas pretty successfully. And uh, anyways, I've been able to source him pretty well. I That's the only way I got him was through playing the game. I didn't spend any extra on him. I don't remember if they had packs where you could buy, but I didn't. But it's this below decks about uh, ability. He has a 60% chance for my tier to increase critical critical hit chance by 25% for two rounds after being hit by a hostile. Um, and like it says there, multiple shots. If a weapon has multiple, sh multiple shots, it only triggers once per weapon. And so if the weapon fires that round, that counts as one opportunity. If it fires three times in that round, that weapon still counts as one opportunity. Um, most effective, for those who don't know, if you have a ship that doesn't have one weapon, but has at least two, three, you know, the more weapons it has, the greater chances this is going to trigger. And so it's going to increase the chances of firing criticals, which has a huge impact. The higher you go, you'll see this huge impact as you're hitting deep space hostels and uh, hostels that you need to do a lot of damage quickly. So let me 
adjust my officers really quick here. I had to carry Kim on there, but I'm going to go to my below deck officers and just put Hugh in place because I think I'll get more. Oh, I wonder if I can still meet my ship. Nope, we're just going to leave. Um, I'm just going to leave Grush on there so I can get my attack, defense, and health at 500% keep it there. Okay, so now that we've gone through and we've talked about the loop and we've talked about the officers and what officers you should use for these hostels and just the whole gamut, appreciate you being patient. Let's go now and let me show you how this is going to work. So what we want to do is go back to deeps, well, DQ space, I guess. I was going to say deep space, but DQ space, Delta Quadrant, Dairy Queen space. And I am going to send my ship to missile up right here and if you go let me sh so you can find the best all the three systems if you go back to your inventory and you can watch this video again if you want but if you click on delta quadrant board coordinates it tells you the specific ses the specific systems this works in and you'll probably want to start with the one that matches your level uh for me I think we said this, I already said this earlier in the video, but I think this this process is going to work best if you have at least a tier six Voyager. Um, just because your cargo isn't that large with the lower tiers and it's harder to balance out the um, doing both the summoning of the eight species 8472 and summoning what we're going to do in just a second here. Um, so it's going to get easier as you go up. And what I mean by that is you're going to use the same summoning juice for summoning the species 8472 as what we're going to summon in just a minute. And so you have to balance out your knees between the two. So I'm going to go to missile up because that's the one I can reach. I can't reach the next system. So let's go ahead and route there. And I don't see anywhere that says that takes 100, but we have 835 so let's do the summon and then hopefully it takes it out right away so we can see it sometimes with certain mechanics i've noticed there's been a lag let's see yep see 735 i have 735 left so it takes 100 to go there and this is a really cool thing that you can use i um, excited to share it with you So we're almost there. This is a token system. Once again, you have to do your regular loop to get these tokens that randomly drop from hostels. And it's interesting because once we get to the system, you'll see that there's not really, I mean, it doesn't look that interesting. It's one of those, if you guys have seen Ready Player One, it's kind of like an Easter egg that they've left in the game that the players found out. At least when I looked at the patch notes and everything, I never saw a communication from Scopely about this, but I think it's really cool and super helpful to my game. Okay, so here we are. We're in the system. All it has are hostels, right? So you have a simulated, assimilated Federation Scout. It gives some broken parts, which broken parts are huge as you get higher up. As you see, they all just have broken parts, nothing special. Okay, so what we want to do is let's do a summon. Remember, we're reducing our cost because we have Neelix on board. Oh, I didn't get a chance to scan it because <laughs> it was right on top of me. So one thing I will show you is that when we hop in Assimilated Data Cube... I took hardly any damage because of the officer setup that we have. No rewards at all. And let me actually, we're going to do some math here. Let me pull up my, I have this ready, but just give me just a second. So what we're looking at here is I have 63,800 Klingon messages and all these messages I do not hit in deep space for for um for messages anymore. I just don't do it. It's a waste of my time. 
it just takes so long to get out to deep space, hop into a system, hope that the hustle you're looking for is there. If not, you're going to another system, another system, another system, and it's just such a time waste. So we've got 63,800 Federation, or Klingon messages, sorry. Romulan message are 10,400. And my rep for my Romulan and my Federation, or sorry, Klingon are faster. And so I, uh, Klingon and Romulan. And so I go through Romulan and Federation messages much faster. Those are the two I'm kind of just letting grow at the moment. Okay, so I've noted those on my computer here. And then what I'm going to do is let's try this again. We'll summon. And it's coming after us. So let me just move away a little bit and then we'll come back for it. But if I click on it, assimilated, assimilator data cube rewards as messages. And it's going to be random. You got, we've got Romulan and I've got Klingon. Okay, so let's go back a little closer. And then I'm just going to use, since I'm trying to maximize the trip here, which is one reason why I didn't do the video right away, is I was trying to do my original loop and then save up some of the summoning juice to do this and show you guys again. And then if we go, let's see if it has any drops yet. See, you can have a randomly, I'll have to do a couple of these. But randomly, it will have a chest. And the interesting thing is it doesn't show any loot, but you end up getting more messages. Um, they just drop into your inventory. You don't have to open a box or anything else. It just drops into your inventory. So rather than waiting, letting having you wait, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit these hostels and then we'll see what we have. And according and with the magic of video editing, we will hop to the big to the end, and I will show you how many messages we have been able to get. All right, and we're back. So I just hit my last DQ assimilated cube hostel. Let's have a look at our inventory, and we'll do some quick math to see. How many we got of each? So we now have 82,300. That's an increase of 18,500 messages. Okay, I have 37,800 Romulan. That's an increase of 27,400. And Federation is 58,000. So in total, I gathered about 73,000, 72,900 messages just in a few minutes. Now, I guess a few minutes might be exaggerating a little bit. Let's call it 10, 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, pretty good. And I don't have to go out to deep space and just hope and pray that I can find these. Um, this isn't going to be the end all be all. I, I, I can see there's some things that are player scope who's coming out with bigger players where you can get even more messages or, or sorry, not messages, even more credits. And you have to save up and be judicial about where you're spending those, of course. But for something that doesn't take a lot of effort, that's pretty awesome. One thing I will mention is um, one of the one of my viewers had mentioned that you can even make this more effective. And this isn't something I've done. I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, but during incursions, there's a loot exocomp that you can use that was significantly, and I didn't know it applied to this, so it's good to know, but um, you you pop that, you go do this loop, and you get even more messages because it's going to increase the, the, the loot or whatever by a significant amount. So what would I recommend? We talked about a lot today. Appreciate your patience as we've gone through all the steps of, uh, of the loop. Um, this probably took longer because it is convoluted. It takes a little bit getting used to. Once you get used to it, it's not that bad. But you can really get a lot of messages if you choose to do so by following this loop. Now, some of you won't have as strong of a ship to be able to do it. That's fine. Some of you won't be the same level with, you know, as I am. 
the Ops 52. Some are going to be higher. I don't know where you're at. But try and take this information and apply it in your game. If you're just getting the Voyager or if you're on the fence of if, if it's even worth it, I highly encourage you to get it. Great ship. It's going to help you so much in your gameplay. Especially if you have other, like I said, other big ships in your alliance that can help you do some bigger armadas. You start them, they finish them, you both get credits. It's a win-win. So, great ship to go for if you don't have it. If you're still working on it, hopefully this gives you some insight on where it can take you. On what benefit you can get from your Voyager that's going to help you with the rest of your gameplay. I think this covers it. The one last thing I will mention as I was doing the summoning, I forgot about this, but what sometimes happens is when you use your summoning juice, it will say something like, blah, 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 hostile could not be detected. Just hop out to Galaxy View, then go back to the system view, try it again, and you should be able to find that hostile. I think I've only had it once where I've had to hop out to Galaxy Wide twice. But for some reason, it just hasn't populated a, a, or spawned a hostel yet. So give that a try. I hope this is helpful. Hopefully the lag is better and the tips and tricks that we've talked about today will help you in your gameplay and really help you get those credits that I think we all desperately need for all the warships and miners that we are trying to, to acquire to make our game uh, you know, a little bit easier and more effective. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and have a good day.